if people can't afford to eat, like that is a fundamental economic failure. And these people have jobs. These people mm -hmm. have jobs. One thing that happened a while ago, but for some reason I saw Bet Dwelling just put out another article on it. It was really good. You probably saw it, which was about how much of the government's deficit they're spending on buying these CMBs. Again, like I kind of see that as they're supplying liquidity to the banks. We don't know which mortgage mortgages they're purchasing. It could be all the bad ones, and then they're putting them on the taxpayer's dollar. But you just gotta ask, like injecting liquidity to encourage banks to lend at this time does that seem like a good time to do that <laughs> well I, I and i think the problem is and of course uh you've seen those uh whatever those swaps are those you know night uh, midnight swaps or whatever they do repo uh, yeah. The, the rico the, yeah the repo market and uh the, the problem is, I think that the banks, they are, they are lacking liquidity by the sounds of it. They, yeah. So first, it, first it was the, the Bank of Canada doing the, the repos, and now it's uh, the government uh, spending, you know, $30 billion to purchase. And, and if you look at the numbers, like it's, what, a $40 billion deficit we're supposed to run this year, and they've already, and, and $30 billion goes to uh, <laughs> the CMVs, <laughs> and they've already spent like, uh, like half of it or something like it's it's and it's only like march so like it's not going to last yeah. and then they're going to be looking for the la the next shot of liquidity into the market so and, and it makes sense right there's there's so much when you have so much debt whether you're a bank or whether you're just an individual like me and you your liquidity dries up from servicing these debts like the banks are servicing yeah. all these like i have gic's with the bank they're paying me interest right that's not like instead of yeah. money sitting in an account they have to pay me so of course, they're 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 hurting, and uh, we'll see. They don't even carry cash anymore. I have like stories of people that went in for, asked for two thousand dollars cash, and the bank tellers sweating because they don't have it. Like, and they have to like order it in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I remember even when we moved to Alberta way back, um, it was the same thing. Like, because we had to move banks, and we were trying to get the money out in the most cost effective way. And I said, well, just give it to me in cash because they charge for every other method. You know, drag wire whatever it is so yeah. anyway they were like we don't have the cash you'd have to order it and i was like okay i'll order it then how long is that gonna take three weeks and i'm like what <laughs> three weeks i'm like in the end they just gave me a bank draft for free it's anything to keep the money within the ledger and not actually produce something physical and yeah. that's the only constraint that we have is cash on the banking system now and that's why they're trying to get rid of it in my opinion. Yeah, we the whole the whole system, whether it's, you know, personal debt or, or corporate debt, it, it's all just this big mirage of, of noise, right? Because we don't, yeah. at the end of the day, it's a very simple equation. You borrow too much money, you have to pay it back and you're subject to interest rates. So everybody borrowed a bunch of money, whether it's corporations, banks, Bank of Canada, the government, whoever it was, and now they have to pay it back and it's hurting them and it's sucking money out of other areas that they should be spending it on. They should be spending it on servicing Canadians, but they have to spend it on servicing debt. And of course, yeah, they try to inflate some of that debt away, but there's only so much you can inflate away and it takes time to do that, right? So yeah, we're mm -hmm. people in corporations, they're, they're hurting and, and especially the small corporations and small businesses like we have like record bankruptcy in the uh, small business sector like yeah, I, I looked at a chart and it was just like through the roof right and yeah and it's because I've you have that a, chart you have that you have that combination of of course well the, the the market now is taking its toll with you know lower spending you have the debt and of course you have those those SIBA loans that had to be paid back in Canada so you have all this debt coming due on these small businesses and they're just like throwing in the towel and saying oh, yeah we're just gonna fold this company and I'll, I'll start again at some other point in time, right? So, yeah, 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 it's sad, but yeah, it's what you would expect with the amount of debt in the system. I think people forget that it's not just the household, it's the private businesses as well. And it's also the government, like it's all the entities within the economy. But I think the, 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 the thing I see like in the future, and I'm like, I don't see a way out of this. And maybe you can, or maybe you have a different perspective on this. I'd love to get your idea on this. But basically, the way I see it is like, they keep inflating. And it's got to the point now that obviously, the numbers are so broken that they produce that everybody can work it out. And the raises people aren't getting, you know, even 
even if they're getting three, four percent rise, you know, inflation is in reality is 10 percent. It doesn't matter what the government is. So it's eating up so much of their budget that they're now running on fumes, essentially, where they're borrowing to just live through their daily expenses. And I'm like, you see the inflation coming down right now because of that, because essentially like all these things like clothing on the last CPI that we just had a couple of weeks ago was a big drawdown there. And it's no wonder because that's no necessity for people. Nobody but, can afford to buy the clothing. That's why it came down. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I don't understand like how you can say there's going to be a soft landing. I mean, we would need like significant deflation in order to bring back the equilibrium to a point where, you know, people are actually breaking even. So I'm just like, even if they try and inflate again, I think it's just going to be like Japan, where they went down that route and it literally just did nothing. It, it, and they've been What's doing it for decades. It's just kicking the can, right? That's just another way. So this video was powered by ExpressVPN, helping you get around the censorship laws in Canada. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash market mania if you're interested in a VPN. Where we are right now, in my opinion, is, and it's very simple. Like I'm, I, I, all I do is think about numbers every day. It's crazy, right? But it's like I keep coming back, circling back around. So it's you have to fight inflation or you're fighting the debt. So it's, it's one or the other, right? You're, you, there's no way, easy way out. And they talk about a soft landing in this this perfect world, which you've never seen a soft landing, supposedly. And I, I've looked myself and there's always been a recession of some kind. So yeah, yeah to have a soft landing, that's dreaming. That's just, uh, you know, telling people what they want to hear. That's like when the plane's going to crash and you're telling them it's not going to crash. And, you know, there's got no wings on it anymore. And um, But there was, uh, I just, I, I listened to something the other day and it had like, um, what was the guy that the fed beef bernanke bernanke or whatever his name was right back in what it was in beef prior to 2008 and it was like mm -hmm. the same things they were saying back then that they're saying now like yeah. you know the banks are failing oh this is we're gonna get this under control no problem and then and it was just like it was the same story and until they finally failed and then they were like oh boy it's failed we need to you know bail them out and whatever else but and th this is what they'll do they will but we're gonna see pain first because if they if they start that stimulus too soon or if they drop those rates too soon and give that debt relief to these you know speculative people that purchase too much on debt well you're first of all you're, re you're rewarding people but it's people are just going to start buying more and inflation is going to so you either have inflation or you have some pain with with higher debt servicing costs and then that's it there's no other way and mm -hmm. time right okay time goes and time's going to help a bit but ultimately that debt, the debt is only catching up now, right? We're, we're, we're not even there. Like these people, the reason we have inflation, like most of the inflation now, and they, they're talking about how low it is. We actually need deflation, like 2% garbage. We shouldn't even have 2%. We should actually have deflation. The majority of inflation is the mortgage debt costs. It's not even, it's shelter adds to it, but it's actually more the debt servicing co costs on mortgages. And that's not gonna go away for years because people are gonna be renewing at higher rates, much higher rates for like two to three years, depending on how quick they drop rates when they do start dropping them. So yeah, we're not gonna get away from this inflation fight and it's gonna be sticky. And now look at April 1st, we got carbon tax, which isn't just gonna affect three or four cents on your gasoline. It's gonna affect everything, like it's gonna yeah. affect all the, the truckers and the groceries and it's everything's going to go up uh, minimum wage is going up of course that's what keeps inflation sticky because you know first of all everyone charges more than they say well we want we need more money because i can't afford these items i need more money to buy a house so you're yeah. going to see wage inflation uh and you got all these things even the liquor and the beer is going the the tax is going up april 1st we got all these new taxes coming so like inflation's not going to go any anytime soon deflation that's what we need nobody everybody hates the word deflation but it's like this is what you need i was listening to an audio book i forget who it was from something web or something the guy's name it's probably famous i, I don't know i don't read that much but uh, i was listening to his book and uh yeah he was saying technology is actually deflationary right yeah uh, and, yeah. and it, so we're, we're getting all this we're getting this time of like ai and stuff and you know people are just they're learning how to use it and that's going to take a lot of people out of the, the workforce and 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 we're going to see like 
you know, technological deflation coming and it's going to be a big pressure. So they're going to be fighting deflation, I, I believe, at some point, um, not inflation, but inflation in the near term, but deflation in, you know, a few years or years out from now. And that's that's what I think. And it makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense with a lot of different things as well. Uh, yeah. And I, I guess it depends as well what their what their fiscal response is going to be during the next crisis, because I just don't see how they don't do stimulus again, because even if you look, and I know a lot of people are like idolizing Pierre and the conservatives and thinking that everything is just going to be great. And I think that comes from like, because we've had such a bad leader, Trudeau of the country and Freeland and oh, yeah. all that. <laughs> They've been so, so bad that people are like, oh my God, some hope finally, because Pierre will be better than Trudeau. But, you know, it could take a school child to be better than Trudeau. But the funny thing is, like, I just think that stimulus response is just going to come because people, otherwise it will literally be a depression. And you can kind of already see us inching towards that right now like it it's not good like just look at food banks for instance food bank usage i mean it if people can't afford to eat like that is a fundamental economic failure and these people have jobs these people mm -hmm. have jobs i remember reading one of the food bank reports from harvest uh, i forget the rest of their name but anyway it was saying that they have a lot of people earning over a hundred thousand dollars in toronto go into the food bank. So you know, people are squeezed massively right now. And I don't see how you kind of reverse out of that without stimulus, because that's what people are going to beg for. And that's kind of what happened during the pandemic. Like, I mean, at one point, I think it was like a fifth of people were on CERB or something like that. Fortunately, I, I don't even see a solution, John. I mean, do you? I, I don't see a solution in a way because, I mean, you it's, it's impossible, isn't it? Like, you can't just say, no, we're not doing anything. And then, like, <laughs> homeless skyrockets. But then if you're going to do stimulus, like, there's a massive trade-off which comes with inflation because you're not producing all that stuff. So you end up with the same net result. Who is it? Kevin O'Leary always says it the best, right? First of all, he, he says we got the worst <laughs> prime minister in, in history right now, which is true. And it, regardless <laughs> yeah. if, you, if, you don't, if you like him or not because of his ideology, a lot of people are ide ideologically driven why they like him or don't like him, right? But when yeah. you're looking at the numbers, he is the worst because we what is the canada is the richest country in the world right and this is this is kevin o'leary that says this and he and you know what I, I like some of what he says and other things i'm not i don't idolize the guy i don't idolize, idolize anybody actually and he said we are the richest country in the world per capita because of all their natural resources and this is how we reclaim our wealth as a country and for the average working person is by unlocking those resources you know and 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 getting people working and producing something because if you don't produce anything you you have if you need uh sorry if you don't produce anything you need to stimulate the economy with printed money and this is what's going to keep happening and this is what trudeau has done and uh so and of course he's totally against any resource sector jobs and he i don't know how like i don't even know what his plan is like to that i don't know we, we all do yoga or something like it just doesn't make sense like <laughs> I, yeah. I can't I can't even understand. Like he says, well, well, everybody like should be driving electric cars or taking public transit, and it doesn't work. Like in, in most no. of Canada, like Canada is like a driving country, and electric cars, you know, there's other there's other solutions, uh, but these aren't realistic because the power grid couldn't handle it. They're just so flawed. Like the whole system. Yes, we need to. And and, you, and again, you got like other countries that are like just mining coal, and China is what putting a one coal fired plant a month or a week online, like, and we could be selling them natural gas. That's like way cleaner, but, uh, you know, Trudeau doesn't want to do it. He wants to like save the world or save the environment. Cause he's a globalist, right? He's, he's a, obviously it's not a conspiracy. He's a globalist and all his ministers are globalists and he can't even answer yeah. a basic question. <laughs> Like yes. at Freeland yesterday, what was she? What was she being asked about? Said, "Oh, how much money have they collected in carbon tax?" And she, she just couldn't and wouldn't answer it. Like it's, <laughs> it's like because it just doesn't make sense. And um, but again, this is the the hysterio, mysterio, whatever world we live in with with 
the the current government and it's sad but you're right the next government they'll be okay in the beginning and maybe things will get better but you know everyone will hate them too at some point we need like radical like reform in the way we vote or something like uh, and of course trudeau was supposed to do that which he didn't do voter reform but yeah i i don't know um i think that at the end of the day people need to produce something we're we're in this kindergarten country now where everybody wins a prize no matter if you work or not and and this is the way it is and then well we'll just give you we'll just give you money and that we're going to print and that causes inflation and inflation is the worst like even the mm-hmm. i've said it before but even the rcmp are saying like you know it, with house prices with people not being able to afford homes like the younger generation it's like it's going to destabilize the country like yep. any of these countries like zimbabwe or venezuela that's have a massive inflation you see people out there burning the country down this is what's going to happen and yeah. uh, so we can't have inflation they have to cut it out uh, in the short term, we need deflation of some kind. We need, and this is what's what's good, because it will be literally taking from the haves and giving it a little bit back to the have-nots. Yeah, there'll be job losses and stuff for a bit, but this is what it takes to survive, right? You can't mm-hmm. have everything. The worst thing you can do, and I'm guilty of it even with my kids, is like give them everything and they never have to work. That's the worst thing you can do to somebody, right? Like, yeah, it's and this is what this country has kind of been run like, well, don't worry, we're going to have social programs for everybody and we'll just print a bunch of money. And, no, this is this is not how it's supposed to work. Uh, you need survival skills. You, you work or you starve like that's mm-hmm. how life is. But we've, we've gotten away from that far too much. I know some people can't work and that's fine. Right. But for the yeah. most part, people I call it the uh, Canadian retirement. <laughs> they just like go on some sort of social assistance that they don't even need because they're just like, whatever, I'm just going to like, uh, I got anxiety. So I'm just going to like take disability and sit at home or whatever. And again, there's legitimate yeah. reasons for it, but there's too many people milking the system. And uh, like even this, the food bank usage, you have students come to Canada and they're like bragging, hey, I go to a food bank, get free food in Canada. Like, like Yeah, yeah. It's being abused, right? We're, we're, there's too many people abusing it and, and that's the problem. We need work. Yeah. And I think the one thing that Pierre is right about, though, is yes, and he's not perfect. And I saw your chart earlier. Like they, they printed more money too, right? Uh, back mm-hmm. in the, after the last cycle. So, mm-hmm. But the one thing he needs, we need paychecks, right? And this is what we need. We need to to have people working. We need to produce something, something more as a country. And this yeah. is how we make things better, not by sitting on our asses looking for free handouts. And I don't know the, when oh, yeah. they're handing you when they're handing you a hundred dollars, but you know the bread costs fifty dollars. Like it's <laughs> it's not a good solution. That's what they're doing now, pretty much at a you know a different scale, obviously. So yeah, yeah, no, you're totally right about that. And I think like as well like i mean the problem is like pierre he he really does say all the right things and he's a smart guy i i gotta give him that like he is 10 times the guy of trudeau like trudeau is an idiot when it really comes down to i don't think he's Mm -hmm. very clever in the way he comes across pierre is very well spoken and uh, he seems to think things through really really well on the spot but, you know, when I was looking recently, again, somebody, a subscriber brought this to my attention that like the Alberta government here in Alberta, which you could probably say is the most conservative in Canada, maybe Saskatchewan, but probably Alberta, the last premier before the one we have right now is now on the board at ATCO, which is one of the big gas companies that charges all these obscene fees to Alberta. <laughs> and it's just mm-hmm. like... You know, the corruption is so, like, in your face and uh, it, and we just kind of glaze over it. And I think this is the major problem. You have this oligarchy set up where essentially you've got government officials going into big companies. You've got these massive companies lobbying and lobbying and lobbying government to have things the way they want it. Media organizations, there's a monopoly on that. Airlines food. We just don't have enough competition because think about it. If they cut the red tape by 90%, more and more people are likely to come in and essentially start businesses. But if you just keep disincentivizing it by more taxes, more red tape, then it's not going to happen. And the same way, if you just make all these laws, like the airline one is one that I I always use as an example where so much of the airline has got to be Canadian owned. Well, that's completely ridiculous. And all that does is it works for WestJet, 
Air Canada, the huge companies, because they've got the capital, they've got the resources, they're well established. And as we've just seen with Lynx, like Lynx and all these uh, ultra cost airlines that are struggling, it looks like Flair might possibly go bankrupt by the time this video uh, goes because they're in trouble. <laughs> but if you look what's happened to airfares over the past couple of years, they've gone down. So you had like deflation because of the increase in competition. And it would be exactly the same with grocery stores. And I think part of the problem is that there's just no inset, like everything's so monopolized when it comes to logistics. It doesn't matter what it is, that it's impossible for a new player to get in and compete. Yeah, it's all the the, the trade laws and, and trade agreements and, and things like that. Like I just went shopping in the States. Like I don't go there usually, but I'm right by the border. And I went and got some Irish butter butter because it's like real butter instead of like the soy based, whatever stuff they feed the cows here. It's like when you scrape mm -hmm. it off after you take it out of the fridge in two minutes, it's actually like comes out off like butter with the knife. Right. Where ours yeah. is like flaking off like uh, you know, a brick of lard or something. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't even, it's not even the same, but, and it's like, like way cheaper right in, in the states too so it's yeah we have all these this protectionism and uh you know buy it, it should be called buy canadian but they actually don't give you the choice they force you to do it the airlines they always it, it's it's like the, these small airlines they always go bankrupt i've never seen one succeed <laughs> Like it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. gonna remain at the end of the day it's what air canada and something else right it's um West, yeah. back in yeah, WestJet. It used to be Canadian Airways or something back in like, oh, the nineties right. or something. Yeah, but uh, yeah, now it's WestJet and uh, Air Canada, and and of course you have the smaller ones in Porter. But they're smart. They've been around for a long time. But but the the national ones are yeah. They it's just it, they can't continue, right? It's just uh, the cost of fuel. The carbon tax will probably wipe them out on April first. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I saw they're in big big problems with flare. I know there's jet lines out of Ontario and there's a couple of others that have popped up, but they all popped up when interest rates were really low, including Lynx. So they borrowed money to get the planes and do everything. And obviously that has just really just been a recipe for disaster, unfortunately for them. Anyway, John, thank you so much for coming on. Do you want to offer any words of wisdom before you go here? <laughs> of course, as always. I would say for the spring market, don't listen to the noise. You could have bought a house like three months ago for $50,000 less. So don't go run out there and FOMO into buying a house. Take your time. If now is the right time to buy for you, sometimes it is, right? It is the right time. Sure, buy a house. Uh, that's that's great if it makes sense on paper and, and, and you don't mind if it goes down 50, 100, 200,000 if we get into really bad times, then it's great. But don't FOMO into buying homes because the spring market's here. And I think you're going to see the spring market end early this year. Wait a few more months at least and... Uh, yeah, that's that's my general advice for, for now. All right. Thank you so much, John. And go over to his channel. Check him out on Twitter. He puts out so much interesting data and things that you can dive through on his Twitter. And go check him out on YouTube as well. Just doing great work. Thank you so much, John, for coming on. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to this episode. I will see you on the next one. Take care.